and it is relentless in standing up to the beating it's taking from day all throughout the day. I agree, I agree. And we're moving on to, like you said, the under 90s here. This is also a category I'm really looking forward to. There's some really big names in here, and I'm really looking forward to it. So we've got Ollie Clark, we've got Josh Lancaster, Shane German, we've got Lee Shaw, Nick O'Hare, just a few that stood out for me, Derek Owens, any names there stand up for you? Narimu is a, 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 he has finished very highly in the past, and he did incredible last year watching him in Florida. I mean, this, this is just going to be one of those classes where there's no clear-cut winner. It's who it's can keep their good. composure, like we've talked about all throughout the yep. day. Who can stabilize themselves under that yoke before they go to the press. Yeah, there's some incredible athletes in this in this round. Stand uh, or submit press medley for the under 90 kilo men. This is going to be a good one, guys. Well, Derek Owens had put on the Officials Games Southwest Regional in Houston last year as a qualifier, and then he also competed at the OSG uh, Finals last year and did very well, and I can only imagine he's only refined the package that he's going to bring this year. But his fellow te Texan, I want to give him a shout out, he's uh, the owner of Battle Axe Barbell in Garland, Texas, and has really done a good job in growing the strongman community in North Texas and the, the southern region of the U.S. So, big shout out to Derek. German here as well, who is the owner of MST. Very, very good coach. He has a lot of athletes here today. Coaches people like Luke Stoltman, he's just taken on. Uh, Lucy Underdown, lots of big names. So I believe he coaches Rob Kearney also. He does, I yes. just saw him there at America's Strongest Man with Rob, and it's really great to see the coaches that travel tremendous distances to support their athletes. I was just about to say, I know how supportive he is. I've witnessed that with being at Giants Live, and to be a coach here and compete must be really tough to yeah. you know, spread that energy around. But it's definitely a, a, I always see an atmosphere of caring and being so involved with the athletes. Yeah. And, you got to respect it. I'm a coach myself, so when I see it, it's, it's very it's very cool. It's good. It's great. But this is, uh, as we increase in the weight stature of the athletes, and of course, as the implements increase themselves, we are seeing a little bit more of a potential to power up some heavy loads. Yep. We might not be, uh, I, I classify like we were talking about with the women, you know, that, uh, that predator class. For the men, I believe it's the 105s. Okay. But we're inching closer there and with are. the 90s. There's a lot of big names in here. As I said, like, there was about 10 names I read out there that really stood out to me that I have seen, you know, perform in front of me. Amazing athletes, very good knowledge and understanding on how to, you know, um, tackle these challenges that are in that yoke is what I actually mean. So, but we'll see. We'll see. We might see some lost faces again as they pick it up. <laughs> well, that's one of the things that I had some joking conversations, you know, knocking on wood the whole time. Are we going to see any athletes taken out by this event? And you would hate to see it, but there are some danger factors here, yes, especially that block and even the yoke when it comes rocking back at the athletes as they're, they're going through the press. We haven't seen it yet, thank you. I, to be honest, I thought we would have seen it by now. I, I would have thought we'd seen a missing it, tooth. It, it, from that yoke, but what happened? Thank I goodness. think the worst that we've seen so far, thankfully, has just been that block coming down and hitting uh, Mike Cromer, or yeah, Mike Cromer right there. Yeah, I don't think he really cared. I, I, that's why I'm, I'm sure there's a dent in that the block. block. <laughs> yeah, I think he just had the adrenaline going. He, I got the lift. I don't care. My foot is fine. It's good. The thing about this class, you have weighing in under 90 kilos, so in pounds that's 200, 200 pounds, but you have a yoke that is 302 pounds, 137 kilos. That I think is going to, I mean, we've seen it repeatedly, but that's going to be the big factor here, is are they able to power up that and get it over? I don't think the block from a standpoint of weight is the issue. Yeah. It's that yoke. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. And this is just going to go down again. We've said it. You know, it's just composure, going in it nice and slow. Are we going to see, you know, it coming from strict pressing, you know, raw shoulder power? But then we've seen it happen with that that thruster move as well with Peter. It, it is doable. So, but we have got some big pressers in here. How many out of this category do we see finish? Do you think? Oh no! This yeah, is... we got to do the predictions. Oh, okay, let's do it. Um, you don't have to pick the names, but just four. 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 It's a pretty good number. That's high. So I, I we, say... we've seen that not a, many people have finished. Hardly any in the men's category so far. So same four. I was gonna guess six. Oh, so a range okay. of four to six. Okay, let's say five. <laughs> If anyone goes in that range, I, and I, I hope they exceed our expectations. I hope so multiple. too. I hope so too. Like I said, there's, I know there's some good pressers in here, so I have high expectations for this for this uh, round, this category. I do as well. I, I do as well. It's going to get interesting, and there's going to be some nail biter moments, I'm sure. I'm stressed already. It's going to be good. It's going to be okay. I do see a Scotsman on the roster, Luke Young. Are you familiar with the athlete? I'm not actually. I'm not. I'm not rec the name. Maybe I will recognize him when I see him. But no, I don't recognize him. Well, perhaps he will make his performance unforgettable to you after today. Yeah, and I will never forget him again. We've got Gavin McNamee as well. Very, very good athlete. Fast. I mean, a lot of these guys are going to be fast because we are still in the lighter categories, the under 90s. They usually are pretty fast, pretty speedy, but it's not really paid off in this to be too fast. But if they can move quick between the events, that always helps. You can see some of the athletes at the side here actually doing the movement as just before this step up. You know, visualization of getting that lift. How important do you think that is? I think the athlete leaves a stone unturned when they don't visualize the lift before it actually happens. You think that all of this is mind to muscle connection, right? So if you're paving those neural pathways before you even get to put your, your hands on the implement, you've already done it. It may not have been in physical reality, but yeah. you've already done it in your head. And that's one of those things I know when I when I uh, joined the 1,000 pound deadlift club in Manchester in 2021, that was a moment where I tried to visualize the way the arena would look when I walked out to the stage, the way the bar would feel in my hand, the immense weight that as it broke the ground, what it would feel like, all before I even lifted it. Yeah. So if you're waiting before you even go, you're looking at the implements, but you're seeing yourself do it in your head, you are further arming yourself. Yeah. You're that much more equipped by when you take that implement, you grab it and lift it off the ground, you're more ready than if you had not. So I think I it's an absolute, absolute crucial component that every athlete should be doing. Whether or not they're physically jumping up and imaginary pressing it in actuality or just doing it in their head. It's very it's important. That, that pre-mental stimulation. 100% because belief is a lot of it and that, that comes in it with confidence. If you can't even visualize yourself pressing it, then that's going to knock your confidence. Absolutely. Nineties. It is a three-man lane. Joshua Paul Lancaster of England. In lane two, Ollie Clark of UK, and in lane three, Diego Valenzuela of Chile. Here we go. Our first heat in the under 90 kilo category men's stand or submit press medley. I'm more excited for this one. understand why people wear caps to press. I feel like it's just going to get in the way. I don't either. It's going to knock off, then it's going to throw you off track. I just don't. What I can say is it probably blocks out some of the lights overhead from mm. getting their eyes, but the second that bar knocks it off your head, it might throw them off. Wow, Josh Lancaster, Ollie Clark. Beautiful fast lifts there from both athletes. Wow, Ollie Clark. Clark. Josh Lancaster also on to the yoke now. Now, let's see. Oh, that, that 
was a close. He almost got that. He almost had that. The split jerk. He's slightly pressing it out in front of him. Ollie yeah. Clark right there. Which we know doesn't work because then that pendulum just goes back and it. <gasps> Is that? Oh, oh no! I thought oh. we were going to see our uh, one of the few successful split jerks. Wow, that was uh, new from Ollie Clark. Oh. That was a, a new. Uh, it is, um, yeah. Quite punishing on the body that was right there. That was, again, but both very men giving very it their absolute all. All right, Heat 2 takes the stage. Gavin McNamee of Ireland in lane one. Caesar Sierra of USA in lane two. Narimu Ahipen of New Zealand in lane three. And Joshua Dargis of USA in lane number four. I'm beginning to get a bit upset with these yokes. I feel sorry for the athletes, you know? It's very, very frustrating for them. They've worked so hard and you can see it, like we've said, you can see it in their faces. As soon as they do that first lift, they're stepping back, looking, thinking, how do I do this? It's completely but this is new. where the athlete, as soon as they're done, they have to be able to take their mind off of what has already happened. Yep. It goes to that old adage, don't cry over spilled milk sort yep. of thing. You have to focus on what comes ahead. Furthermore, the athletes that do get it, that is so empowering. Yep. And you and I are both getting distracted. We're seeing Trey Mitchell <laughs> get <laughs> being wheeled, wheeled across the field. We'll talk about him more after this heat goes. This is going to be a good <laughs> one to watch. My eyes are on lane number three. I want to see Narimu do some damage here. Uh, I'm looking at number one, Gavin Makami. As I said, I have seen him compete a very good athlete. Easy press. Both lane one and lane three are through. All lanes through to the Monster Dumbbell now. We have it. A successful split jerk. Split jerk. We did it. He did it. Narimu. I'm saying Takes we did block. it. <laughs> we didn't do anything. <laughs> we believed in him. That's what we, we did. did. Oh, come on. We want to see him get it, don't we? Like, that was yes. amazing. He's got time. You've got time. As of right now, he has 15 seconds. Come on. Get into it. I want him to get it so bad. Oh Five gosh, seconds. oh, that was just a bit too explosive on that clean. Wow, but just tremendous speed and execution from Narimu. You called it. He was one to watch, and that finally, split jerk. It, that again, nothing's impossible. Was, nothing's we were saying, oh, you know, maybe you shouldn't do that. It works. If you've got that stability at the top, solid stability, it can work. A well-practiced, well-practiced split jerk. Okay, we have Heat 3, Mike Music of USA in lane 1, Aiden Howell of USA in lane 2, Keith Cherry USA in lane 3, and Michael Emilson of Sweden in lane number 4. And while we're waiting, we have got Trey Mitchell, who was just wheeled on to the stage. For those who don't know, Trey Mitchell is one of these world's strongest men. Yep. He will win that title someday, I am sure. 100%. But he unfortunately blew out his Achilles tendon at the Rogue Invitational a few uh, weeks back. But he is here, no less, scooting around, <laughs> not letting anything slow him down. Nope. And of course, wearing the cowboy hat that is his signature look. But a good friend of mine, I'm glad to see him here. And we're off. Look at that mullet of power in lane two from Aiden. Wow. And power indeed. He moves that dumbbell so fast. Wow, lane two, that's the power of the mullet. Look at it. Oh, don't rush that. Yo. So erratic that he's lost plates and yeah. he has to struggle. He's lost all the plates. Unfortunately, that is completely on him. Yeah, just you need to relax with the yoke. 
A little bit fast going into that. Oh, he's that's so a erratic. Real sh that's a real shame because the first two lifts were amazing. Oh, I am. Uh, I am seeing some some bent tips oh, on no. that yoke. Oh. Yep, that is some. Yeah, he did it. He did it. Wow. But that's one of the things with the rules is that the, if the athlete is not controlling their implement enough to where it causes weights to go flying everywhere, they are responsible for getting their weights out. Whether or not volunteers are able to get there in time, they cannot get a successful rep until they have reloaded their implement. Yeah, and he, did, he tried to press it several times before, you know, they've got the plates back on, so it's a wasted energy. Heat four is Ryan Largay in lane one, Jeffrey Coe of USA in lane two, Joshua Pinkerton of USA in lane three, and Shane German of the UK in lane number four. But I imagine we're going to need to reassemble that yoke, get the weights loaded correctly and all the heights set. So we will have probably a short, brief pause. But look at all the blue shirts on the field. Yeah, it's just amazing. incredible staff. It is. They're absolutely amazing, organized, know where they need to be. They're doing a great job. It's a long day for them as well. That yoke looks fine. It's a little bit bent. It'll be fine. And we are off. 265 pounds on the bar. Wow, that will stumble there from Shane jumping over the bar. There's a lot to do. Wow. Beautiful. His elbow dipped down a little bit, but right. he's still got that press. Testing that there, you can see. Did he get it? No. No, just shy of establishing control. He needs to show he has full control of the weight before he gets the down call. Now this is somebody that is an amazing presser, so again, it's just showing how tough this yoke is when you're getting frustrated there. You... I saw him say something to himself. I would have loved to get that actual yeah. words, but... Yeah, he knows. It's frustrating. Good effort from all the athletes there. As you can see he's, he's a bit gutted. And it is frustrating because if you're doing these weights and training on your yoke, you're expecting to move through this quickly and efficiently. Everyone hits this and they're thinking about that block. Yeah. They're thinking about getting to the block and finishing it. And then when that reality doesn't happen, it's, it's a game changer. Yeah. And how long are you gonna linger and dwell on it? Yeah, I know, you just gotta move on now, next event. All right, in heat number five, Jacob McBride of USA in lane one, Josh Miles, USA in lane two, Chris Reddyford of New Zealand in lane three, and Chase McGee, USA in lane four. Three Americans and one New Zealander. We we'll have to remember as well, this is just the first event. Yes, we're going to have leaders and have people that have obviously got in the block and done absolutely amazing, but it is only one event. So, you know, the guys that haven't made it right through, don't worry. It's, you don't need to worry at this stage. That is so much easier said than done. I, I can know, think about it through the competitors' eyes and, and their minds that they are just, it's almost impossible to not have feelings of emotion when you don't do what you think you're going to do. Oh, I'd be raging. That means really, really mad. As a coach, I tell the athletes, <laughs> it's okay to feel those things, but you only get to feel them for 10 minutes. After that, you start thinking about what comes next because yeah. any anything else is just wasted energy and performance capacity. I agree. I'm watching Jacob McBride on lane one. He's a former athlete of mine. I don't work with him anymore, but he's still someone I keep up with, a friend. And he is a strong performer. Amazing. But all of these athletes, most of them have had to cut a tremendous amount of weight and regain it back over a day's time. But yep. you got to wonder how much do those weight cuts play a factor in their performance? I agree. You see Chase there looking very calm, smiling. <laughs> Chase has totally one of the best chilled mustaches out. I've ever seen. It is amazing. Just Love the headbands. Yes. Very cool. Beautiful. Oh, what just 
yourself, Chris. All four men are moving. Chris, the pace setter. Moving on to his yoke now. We've also got Jacob moving on to the yoke. And Chase, three men. Oh. Chase looks very snappy on that split trick, just slightly oh. up front. Oh! Come on. We want to see it. <gasps> Come on! Oh, no! So. Oh, that's so annoying. So close, these so, athletes. That's just so annoying. It's just that swinging. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's so tough. And you can just see, they've just got it. Oh, it's such a shame. But, but we are here to find the world's strongest. Yes, and it's, it's doable because we've seen it. The strongest person will be able to control the swing and power it up. That is the hard, cold truth. <laughs> I know, it's such a shame. But it is so frustrating. It's so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Okay, moving on to heat six, Luke Young of Scotland in lane one, Volker Bauer of Germany in lane two, Jake Hamer of USA in lane three, and Tyler Davis of USA in lane four. Our yokes are set, ready for the next heat. The stance from Volker just is attack mode right there. He's ready. That's the same from Young. Yeah, they look really focused. All these they're, guys. They're ready to go. They're ready. Jake there in his sprint stance. <laughs> Great clean. Beautiful from Jake. That was really good. Big jump over that barbell. Tyler, I've seen him compete before, and he is very good, very fast. Can he get a handle on this yoke? Oh, he got it, he got it. Wow. Lane four, Tyler Davis, USA. Oh my goodness. Oh, I think I think the yoke went behind. I'm not sure if he's getting that left, which is but they're gonna have a discussion whether Tyler gets that lift because it, it went he dropped it behind him which is one of the rules that we... you can't drop it behind you. Yep, and if they, they did. If it's accidental, you get it and then you stumble after you get the down signal, I think that's okay, but I think if you purposely drop it behind you to go through quicker, I don't think that's allowed, so I think they're just having a discussion right now whether he's got the left or not. You know, I was at the rules meeting last night and they made it abundantly clear. If they you did. purposely drop it behind you to go quicker, it is You'd... not allowed. It is a safety issue, and it is one of those things where the athletes need to go into this knowing that dropping it behind them is not an option unless it is absolutely unintended yep. to avoid them being injured. Yeah, and, and we can tell the difference if it is a genuine mistake where they have 
gotten the down signal, they've stumbled and it's fell. You know, and they look behind, you, you know. But well, when this they, is one of those know. reasons also why we have so many judges from every different viewpoint. Something might not be as easily viewable from a judge from the front yep. versus a judge directly from the side of the athlete. So a tough pill to swallow. And I mean, you can see it in the athlete putting their heart and soul on the field. But the it was made abundantly clear last night in the rules meeting. It was. Rules are rules. <laughs> Okay, we have Heat 7, Pierre Alain Champagne of Canada in lane number one, Nick O'Hare of USA in lane two, Yoni Rautanian of Finland in lane three, and Luke Sinagra of USA in lane four. Incredible lineup here. As I said, I have seen Nick O'Hare compete, and he is a very strong athlete, very powerful. Pierre, blazing wow. through that dumbbell. And we've got three guys moving on to the yoke. Are we going to see it? Come on. We've got Luke onto the monster dumbbell. Pierre taking his time, biding his energy. That is what it took. Beautiful. Pierre gets the down call. 10 he seconds. Can he get this block in 10, 10 seconds? seconds? 10 seconds. You've got to be fast here. Come on. He's going for it. Come on. Oh. Oh, that's, that's one of those things where you think 10 seconds is a good amount of time, but picking that block up, taking your hands, readjusting them to under, getting in the press position, stabilizing, that takes a bit longer than 10 seconds. It does. And it does. All of the athletes who are watching need to take note of that because we've seen it multiple times. Where if you think 10 seconds is enough, you either got to really sprint it or you got to make sure that you're not waiting when you get there. Yeah. Pick it up and go because you don't get more time. Okay, we have Brian Bauer of USA in lane one, Mike Dell of England in lane two, Lay Shaw of Australia in lane one, and Gardar Olafsson of Iceland. I might be getting that name wrong, but I will perfect it as the weekend goes, I promise. I think that's right. Gardar yeah. Olafsson, okay, I think yeah, I did you're get right. it right. All Amazing, right. good job. I'm so glad you're doing the names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I could carry that burden for you. Uh, I definitely appreciate the different flavors and dialects from across the globe. <laughs> and getting to articulate them is, a, is a, a challenge, but still a pleasure. Yes, you're doing a great job. Thanks, Nicola. Here we go. Lee Shaw and Gardar just moving fast. Wow. Lee Shaw, Australia's strongest man. Look at the recovery from our Icelander. Oh, oh, oh that was close for Lee Shaw on that yoke. And he gets it, he gets it, he's moving on the block. Can we see this block move? 30 seconds left. We got 30 seconds, he's got time, but as we said, it does take time to get that in position and press it, so can't really be wasting any time waiting about. We need to get into it. Come on, Lee. We want to see it. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Incredible. Woo! And he's still holding it there like it's nothing. Incredible. Absolutely Lisa, amazing. Australia. That is massive points. Massive points. Incredible for Lee Shaw. Well done. You love to see it. Love that. But it is such a diamond in the rough today. Love that. Again, showing nine. that it's sorry, I interrupted no, there. No, just showing say? it is doable, people. It is doable. Tough but doable. With two heats left, we might see some more finishers. Might. We might. might. Heat nine. We have Sean Pope of Canada in lane one. Andrew Haynes of USA in lane two. Nikolai Myers of USA in lane three. And Philip. Zajacek of Czech Republic in lane number four.
Nick Myers, a high contender in the past. Always incredible watching him. As for Andrew Haynes, but Sean Pope and Philip Zajicek cannot be counted out. This is a high stakes heat right here. Can we see someone make it to the end? We've seen Lee Shaw do it in the lead. Sean. Yeah, okay, we've got all guys moving on to the dumbbell. This is fast. Don't underestimate that yoke, guys. I think Philip is having the most composure of the three right now. It's moving well. But he also leans back heavily. On he that leans catch, back and I too think much. We talked about it. <gasps> oh! Uh. Yeah, especially going into that split jerk. You just can't be leaning back. It needs to be snappy underneath to get that. Yeah. Oh! And Nick still a little bit leaned back as well. And I think you nailed it when you brought that factor into the equation. That pendulum from the, the bottom heavy anchor yoke it does not allow it to happen. No. That block is so elusive. He's just sitting there waiting to be picked up. Very ominous look it has. <laughs> such a simplistic shape, and yet such a uh, untouched adversary for many. I know. It looks so simple, like compared to your big wheels, your big monster dumbbell, your massive yoke, and then you've just got this little tiny block. And it's the worst one. Heat number 10, our final heat for the men's under 90 kilo class. Nicholas Lindroth of Sweden, lane one. Victor Lingman of Sweden in lane two. Vincent Maselli of USA in lane three. And Derek Owens, USA in lane four. We have Sweden versus USA here on this final heat of the under 90 kilo class. Final heat. I'm watching Owens on lane four. Yeah, me too. Seen him compete as well. Amazing. At the Chaos Classic. And he was incredible. And just shows there by that press. But we've got Victor as well, Victor Lingman. I've actually have seen him compete as well now. I, I see his name up there. Victor moved faster than Dumbbell. He yeah. is our pace setter. He is. Can he get the shield first time? Oh, oh, oh. Wow. So clean. He has so much time. So much time. Come on. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. 25 seconds for Derek Owens to get this block. He's taking his time. He's getting a breath. Oh, beautiful clean. Mm. Was that the right decision, though? Wow. Derek Owens. I believe he will be our new leader. We need the official time. I want to say he got about 47, 48. He's, ex Ooh, he's very excited. Why wouldn't you be? He was almost bent in half, but he got it. I am saying a word that he is our new event leader, but we will get the, the, the official time. Yeah, we will. Amped up, amped up. Derek Owens, the owner of Battle Axe Barbell from Texas. Well done, Derek Owens. That was that was incredible to watch. And <laughs> I'm, you can I'm still wondering hear him. If, if the audience can hear him still in our background, but he is filling he, up the arena with his roars. He is pumped. That yoke is the determining factor. It really is. And it he is. Looked, he took his time, gathered himself, and locked out with such a straight posture. Didn't lean back at all. It was incredible. Yeah, he is our event leader, Derek Owens. Amazing. Incredible performance. That was that was that was great. And finished off the under 90 kilo category amazingly.
but we will still have that elusive sub 30 second finish. <laughs> Here we go. I don't know. I know. I don't know if it's going to happen. Up next, we will have our men's 105 kilo class, and we will have a weight change across the board as if they weren't heavy enough. <laughs> We're going to make it heavier. We've got 285 pounds, 129 and a half kilos coming up on the barbell. And okay, before we go on any more on the weights, these are our official scores for the men's under 90 class in that event. Look at Derek Owens. 47.82 seconds for his finish. Narrow inching, narrowly inching out Lay Shaw with 49.24 seconds in that second place finish. We have Narimu Ahipene in third place with three reps in 23.2 seconds, and Pierre, three reps in 45.25 seconds. And a big spread after that. No one else got the yoke from fifth down through tenth on the screen. And here we have 11th place through 20th, all the way down. Philip of the Czech Republic with two reps in 15.6 seconds, very fast speed, and narrowly behind him, Gardar Olufsen, 15.6 seconds, Joshua Paul Lancaster, two in 16.5. Look at that, just fractions of a second between all of those athletes grouped in that four, four placing. Incredible. But there's, there's such a significant disparity between who got those first two implements versus who got that anchor yoke, getting all three. Yep. And there we have the continuum of our men's under 90 class. Two reps in 20.82 seconds by Jacob McBride there at the top. Nick O'Hare, a tenth of a second behind him for those two reps. And we saw it, we saw it how quickly the athletes were able to articulate from that barbell to the dumbbell. We got Ryan Largay with 21.2.12, Nicholas Lindroth, 22.3, just this is what it comes down so to at such close. a high stakes event. Fractions of a second for those big points. Incredible round there, incredible. And those athletes who were able to only get that first implement, 31 through 37th place, one rep in eight seconds all the way down to one rep in 19.4 seconds by Luke Snaga right there. But even getting that one rep, that's an, a respectable weight and it is. It is still points on the board. That, that's something that these guys need to take as, okay, I did it, I got points. The frame will go to 670 pounds, just about 312 kilos, 310 kilos around there. The large stone will be 260 pounds, 118 kilograms, and the small stone will be 215 pounds, 97 and a half kilos. Spicy. Big weights. That's Joshua Pinkerton, relentless grip, here it comes. And Josh pushes the frame there, heading over to the stones. Luke Sinagra also onto the stones. Still has a 25 seconds on the clock. Can he make it? And we've got Luke catching up behind Joshua now. And Vincent also at the stones. And that's time. It looks like Luke might have finished a little bit further. It might I be the camera he angle here, but either way. It does that's look valuable. like he's yeah. Oh definitely. Heat number two. In lane one will be Jeffrey Coe of USA. Lane number two will be Brian Bauer, USA. Lane three, Luke Young of Scotland. And lane number four, Sean Pope of Canada.
Shot of that beautiful frame by Sticks and Stone. Master craftsmanship. And craftsmanship can not only look pretty, it has to be extremely robust and durable in this case. I completely agree, and it, it looks great. It looks great. My favorite is when the athlete's faces match the color of the frame. <laughs> when they try and pick it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Very aesthetic. And I think we are good to go for this next heat. We're waiting for that whistle to go. And we're off. And we've got all four men moving nicely here. Wow. Oh. Sean Pope of Canada. Luke Young had a good run there, but just hand slipped. Can he finish it? And We've got Jeffrey Coe over the line, back to those stones. Just seen there, Luke Young had a very fast start, but struggling to get it over that line now. Jeffrey Coe is moving well. These men need to stay up. Ten seconds left. Five seconds. Sean Pope, I hope there was something actually preventing him from going again because him deciding not to do one more pick really allowed him to lose his lead yeah. right there in the last second. I think you can see now that how heavy these are getting now. And it's affecting the, the grip and the hands of these guys. Affecting was a very gingerly way of putting it. <laughs> it is putting a beating yeah. on their hands and their grip. But uh, It is brutal. The onslaught continues as we have in heat number three, lane one, Diego Valenzuela of Chile. Lane number two, Joshua Miles, USA. Lane three, Joshua Dar Dargis, USA. And lane four, Keith Cherry, USA. A battle of two Joshes in lanes two and three. Step that Keith took, he started getting pulled lower and lower and lower, tugging on that upper back. Try and get that back upright, look forward, head up. There we go, he's got his momentum back again. Just need that a little bit closer, a little bit more over the line. On to the stones for Keith now. He's got 20 seconds, how far can he get? He's doing well. Come on. Keith, as he's moving, I'm seeing that upper back just start to get tugged lower and lower. Yeah. Like I said, it is getting tired now, the upper back. But he is our leader in this heat. He is. And that was Keith Cherry of the USA. We are on to our fourth heat in lane one. Jack 
Hammer of the USA. In lane number two, Gavin McNamee of Ireland. Lane three, Chase McGee, USA. And lane number four, Michael Emelson of Sweden. Ready to go. Oh, he's ready, he's ready. Are we going to see that leaderboard taken from Jeffrey Cole? Let's see. And a good start. Wow, Gavin. Gavin. Wow, look at those feet. He that was incredible. So, Jumps out of that frame. So good off the start and through the carry. Incredible. Can he do the same with the stones? He's moving very well, steady. I think he's gonna get it in a one out What a time, and he knows, he knows. Gavin McNamee of Ireland with a lightning fast finish. He is not mucking about there, was he? No, he is not. It almost looked like he was gliding across the course. Not just with the frame, but with the stones as well. Michael Emerson. Closing his distance, passing Jay Palmer. To see how tough these stones are. Was that 22? I'm sure it was. Let's find out. That's <laughs> nuts. That is crazy time. Crazy fast. Heat number five, Nicholas Lindroth of Sweden in lane one, Ryan Largay of USA in lane two, Nick O'Hare of USA in lane three, and Jacob McBride of USA in lane number four. That's going to be a tough time to beat from Gavin. <laughs> just light and fast. And just another one of those perfect starts. Like as soon as that whistle blew, he was up, ready to go, possibly anticipating a little bit, but he played his cards exactly right to where he pulled it off flawlessly. It was amazing. And you could just see his feet lying underneath that frame. And the stones were the same, pretty flawless there. Oh, 
Well, we can see already that Gavin's time is not going to be beaten here in this event. But can they get a good time and get those points up? I think McBride has torn his hand. And here comes on the 20. Ryan on the stones, 15 seconds on the clock. He looks great here. He's looking good. Can he keep it going and get it to the end? Has he got enough time? Come on, come on. Oh, so close. Come on, finish it. Oh, good effort there. Six, Mike Music, USA in lane one. Mike Dell of England in lane two. Caesar Sierra of USA in lane three. And Yoni Rautanian of Finland in lane number four. Stones. Closing on 15 seconds left. These guys have time, but their grips are totally torched. Their, their grip is done. They are struggling here. You can see that right hand on Mike Dell just does not want to work today. It's just not happening. Struggled on the frame there as well. Heat number seven, lane one, Volker Bauer of Germany. Lane two, Shane German of the United Kingdom. Lane three, Chris Reddiford of New Zealand. And lane number four, Joshua Paul Lancaster of England. Here we go. 
us. We've got struggling a little bit here, guys, with these friends. But we have got Valkyrie number lane one farthest on. Shane, I think, leaving it there. Not sure what's happened. Really pushing it there, really giving it everything. Walker is so close. There, he's over. Can he make it back in time to get a good distance with the stones? have to admire the athletes that are out there all the way to the end of the time expiring. And I don't want to take anything away from the athletes that leave before their time expires. I can only assume that that's just something like they've, they've lost a the callus or their hand yeah. is open bleeding or they felt a pop somewhere. But I, I, I love to see that grit of the athlete just there trying and trying to get every last inch, even if it makes them tired, even if it hurts, even if it makes them want to cry a little yeah. bit. <laughs> The tears running down their face. Yeah, yeah, I love it. You know, we're coming to the middle, middle, or almost the end of our leaderboard, and we're seeing people struggling here, mm -hmm. like really struggling. Yeah, not you wouldn't expect miss. it. No, I was not expecting that. I'm a bit, I'm a bit shocked. But a bit of a uh, difference between those statically strong on the overhead press yep. and those who can move with a heavy weight in their hands. Yeah. Heat number eight. We have Gardar Olafsson of Iceland in lane one. Philip Zajicek of the Czech Republic, Andrew Hainis of USA in lane number three, and Ollie Clark of the UK in lane number four. Here we go. We are off. Leaping lane number two is across that line. I had a feeling Philip was going to be really good at this. Good momentum with these stones. If you can keep that up, keep his balance, get it across that line. The stones are rocking him. He saved it. I think he's going to get it right there. And he did Phillip. it. Philip, well done. Our Let's Czech athlete. With Gardar Olofsson finishing narrowly behind him. Absolutely incredible. Come on, let's go! Come on! 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 Come Awesome, awesome. He was getting shook around by those stones over and over, but he was he, resilient and did not quit. He fought it and he got it. <laughs> See, it ramping up a little bit, yeah. some of these athletes. They're in pain. I mean, that is a brutal event. I mean, a grip event itself is awful, but then you put two grip events in one thing. That is. Yeah. A little bit cruel. <laughs> it's, it is cruel, but we have to be <laughs> cruel when we're filtering out the strong from the absolute strongest. Yes, I agree. Heat number nine in lane one, Nikolai Myers, USA. Lane number two, Victor Lingman, Sweden. Lane number three, Aiden Howell, USA. And lane number four, Tyler Davis, USA. And this will be our second to the last heat of this massive under 90 kilo class. Gavin 
to me with that 22.04 leading finish, it's going to be very hard to beat. If there are any athletes that can, instincts would say it's in these final two heats, but that is an insane time, if I'm being frank. I don't believe that it can be beaten. I think that Gavin's got that in the back. Uh, we're not going to see it out of this one. No, definitely not. I have to be critical once those frames drop. As soon as it drops, you've not got it. Because Gavin's performance was flawless. It really was a perfect run for him. It really was. I'm glad Nick Myers has that big beard because he is really head diving with those last ditch efforts there. Oh. Finish. oh, I hope he's not hurt himself. Love grab the shoulder there, but maybe just because, well. I think maybe just the ego a little bit. But that was a rough catch, and there was a lot of, uh, you know, in, in the heat of an event like this, especially when it's all gas pedal, no brakes for such a short amount of time, you might hurt yourself in the middle of it and not even realize it until you're done. Yeah. Amazing. This brings us to our final heat, heat number 10 of the men's under 90 kilo class. Pierre Alain Champagne of Canada in lane one. Narimu Ahipene of New Zealand in lane two. Lay Shaw, Australia in lane three. And Derek Owens, our leader in the gold shirt, USA, lane number four. Now, if Gavin's time is to be beat, I think it would be definitely from this final heat, but I still believe he's taking the leader, leader shirt for the next one. Here's the thing. These guys, when they know that pressure on and just how fast McNamee was, if they are really, truly trying to win, they're going to gamble. And a dice toss, hopefully it's not a dice toss, it's more of a coin toss where they're out 50-50, but... I don't think it's 50-50 odds when you got the unpredictable nature of these stones. I agree. Their frame has to be perfect. It has to be level. Their start has to be perfect. Even one drop, no matter how fast they recover, it will be terribly You're out. Costly. You're out. They're going to have to be flawless, like Gavin, to be even close to that time. 22.06 seconds is incredible. Do you think we see it? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty I, sure you said you don't think we see it. I'm <laughs> saying if we were to see it, it would be in this heat, but I still don't think anyone's going to beat that time. Honestly, I'm going to be right there with you. I don't, I don't like to bet against Derek Owens, but Gavin, I mean, just the second he took off, like we both knew yeah, he was going to do something phenomenal. Yeah, and he did. Executed but I love to be proven wrong, and I hope that they do it. You never know. You never know. in contention taking too long there yeah he's taking too long to go back to that stone so yeah, Gavin McNamee is definitely still our leader but I mean this is our top athletes in this from that first event and they are struggling well I don't want to take anything away from Pierre because he is killing it right now we were very critical because we're talking about Gavin but Pierre this is going to finish sub 45 yeah. seconds if he closes that distance yeah about a 43, 45 second finish there. A little bit slower, but again, not much we can critique on that. It no. was very good, very smooth. He executed that very well. I can imagine that lanes two through four are going to leave here a little bit feelsy. Yeah, I don't think they're going to feel too good. No. But that leaves Gavin McNamee of Ireland with a whopping 22.04 second finish. Amazing. Untouchable. I just, yeah. No one was even close. Absolutely untouchable. I think the only one close was Mike Cromer. 
but that was in a different category in the men's 50 plus. <laughs> yeah. Two point zero six seconds in first place. Philip Zaychek, thirty one point four seven seconds. Gardar Olafsson in third place, thirty seven point nine five. And look at that close finish with four and five there. Everyone else getting a measurement. Keith Cherry in eleventh place with sixty three feet nine inches. And we have it going all the way down the page from eleventh through twentieth. Of every athlete that does get a shot at those stones, finishing the frame, earning respectable points, but that is 10 points that separates all these names on the screen right here. Vincent Maselli, 21st place, 51 feet, one inch. And we have, I believe, Narimu might have been the last one to clear that frame, if not getting very close. But every other athlete south of 24th place will have gotten a measurement and not completed the frame. But it's points on the board. Every inch counts. Jacob McBride leads this page in 31st place with 18 feet 2 inches. We saw him possibly tear a good chunk off of his hand right there. And 34th place through 37th place finish less than 10 feet on the frame, still earning points. Nicholas Lindroth and Derek Owens unfortunately zeroing. Okay, and we are on heat number one. Here we go. Of the men's 90 kilo class. Lane one will take Nick Lindroth of Sweden. Lane two, Shane German of the UK. And lane three, Mike Music, USA. We are off. Shane onto the second bar already. Beautiful, no straps there. Shane really looking to make up some points. He is, yes. After yesterday. He struggled on that overhead when he got to the yoke and also struggled on that frame. But you can see there, he is making up for it on this deadlift. Shane, our pace setter, locked out the fourth bar at 705 pounds. Taking his time up to that final bar. 335.5 kilos. What? That is crazy. Heat number two, Nick O'Hare of the USA in lane one. Lane number two, Lay Shaw of Australia. And lane number three, Derek Owens of USA. And a full four-man heat, Chris Rutherford of New Zealand in lane four. Some big names in there that, that we've seen struggle with that frame yesterday. Uh, Derek Owens has won. He was the event leader after number one. Yeah. Looking to make some redemption points here. And he's off to the races in lane off. three. Followed closely by Nick O'Hare as well. And Lee Shaw now moving on to the second bar along with Chris. They are neck and neck. Nick O'Hare getting in. He gets it. He's on to the final bar. Here we go. Woo, let's go, let's go. Is he going to get it? It's Nick O'Hare fighting on. for 740. Come Look on. Look at this lockout. Come on, come on. He gets Nick it. Nick O'Hare. USA. Derek Owens. Come on, Derek. Just a bit outside of his performance capacity, but Nick O'Hare. Wow. Locking out that massive yeah. 335 and a half kilo bar right there. Just incredible. Take another drink of that protein shake. I said it. Incredible. We said it. Because it's true. And that is the whistle. Boom. That was fast. That was incredibly fast. You blink and it was done. 
Heat three in lane one, Joshua Dargis, USA. Lane two, Jacob McBride of the USA. Lane three, Joshua Paul Lancaster of England. And lane number four, Joshua Miles. Look at this. We have three Joshuas in this heat. Joshua, 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 and Jacob, all Jays. All the Jays. It's a J-off. It's a J-off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll leave it it's at that. It's a J-off. Um, we have Jacob McBride in lane number two. He did tear his hands pretty bad. I saw him post up on Instagram that it looked, was a, a yeah. pretty deep gouge in his hand from that frame carry, but how effectively can he tune it out? Because Jacob McBride is a phenomenal deadlifter. I want to see big things out of him. But in the midst of these Joshuas, what will happen? Here we go. Beautiful. Josh Lancaster, I know, been working really hard on his deadlift. Using that hitch. Nice. McBride clean on the way up, answering the call. McBride, now our new pace setter in this heat. He is feeling the strain of this weight. Twenty seconds left. Jacob has got time to get this bar. Don't think we're going to see it. There wasn't much so. movement in that bar there. Oh, uh, guys. It's hard to come back and get a deadlift when you've tried it. It just doesn't go up. But our yeah. leader remains as Nick O'Hare, five bars in just a little under 40 seconds. Heat number four, Yoni Rautianen of Finland in lane one, Ollie Clark of the UK in lane two, Diego Valenzuela of Chile in lane number three, and, and Aiden Howell of USA in lane four. I think Ollie Clark is another one of those athletes who needs a little bit of redemption points here. Yes. After day one. And Aiden Howell, the power mullet, a little too ballistic on that anchor yoke yesterday. Yes, he was. Probably looking to show his strength here on the deadlift. Here we go. Oh, little trip there, but we're moving on to the second bar. Ochoni. Second bar done by Ollie Clark and Aiden. Ollie Clark, Ollie our Clark. new pace setter in this heat. Here he goes. Let's go from the UK. Come on, Ollie. Get it done. Get it done. Come on. Fight it. Big points. Oh. That's just so much tension in his posterior chain. He's okay, but it just sprung him right back and he landed on his rear. 10 seconds. He's gonna go again. Is he gonna get it? I don't think there's enough time. Nope. You know, I hate to be critical of the athlete when they're in that moment where it's just extreme adrenaline, but it seemed a bit reckless to try it again on that second attempt. I think that maybe, yeah, the adrenaline I was still it. there. And it, you know, you're not really thinking straight. You're like, right, uh, uh, that was almost there. I'm going to go again. I admire it, but it could have been a very costly injury. He Respectable. And, and we talked about it. an athlete really fighting for some redemption points after day one. But powerful nonetheless. Yeah. Very powerful. He's strong. He's looking a bit dizzy there, walking off it. He number five in lane okay. one, Rimu Ahipene of New Zealand in lane one. Lane two is Luke Young of Scotland. Lane three, Volker Bauer of Germany. And lane number four, Vincent Maselli, USA. Narimu was an absolute force to watch last year. He had to miss out on OSG in 2021. Fallen a bit short of expectations, I would say, in okay. day one. But these athletes that are so experienced really know how to turn it up when they need it. They sure do, and that's, you know, when you do have a bad event, you can switch that around, give you that extra push, that extra motivation to go into the next event with that fire. Nice lift from Vincent. As with Volker. Good lift from Luke Young there. A little bit slower, but it was a good lift. 
taking his time here. Yeah, lanes one and two being calculated in their exertion. It's a nice wide stance out of Maselli there. Volker Bauer putting the pressure on Vincent, getting to that bar quick. These are points for split times available. 7.05 for Volker Bauer. Ten seconds left. He could have benefited a bit from strapping up rather than egging on the crowd. But be off the energy, Volker. Let's go. Seconds. I don't think it would have gone up even if he had more no, time. No, I it don't stalled think so. Out a bit. That was tough, but he got off the floor. It was good, but it did stick, and I, I don't think it would have moved. Any Heat number six further. takes the floor with Mike Dell in lane one from England. Lane number two, Cesar Sierra of USA. Lane number three, Chase McGee, USA. And lane number four, Brian Bauer, USA. Can anyone touch Nick O'Hare, Nicola? I mean, he was super fast, but... We've got a lot of athletes to get through here. And a he lot was of good so athletes. early in our heats, too. I love when that happens I because know. it puts the pressure on in such a literal sense. I definitely think we're going to see five bars completed. But Nick was fast, extremely fast. And we still have four more heats after this, so anything can happen. We've got lane number three, our event staff cleaning up, making sure we've got a nice, clean lifting environment. It's not uncommon with the immense amount of pressures involved with the deadlifts for there to be either, of course, excessive sweat or maybe even a little blood. A little but bloody nose. We, we have a great team here keeping everything nice and clean. The Smurfs are on it. The Smurfs are on it. And there's Chase McGee in lane three, eyeing down his lane. A man with what I think is the best mustache here. Oh, Although of course it's it is. A, it's a contentious field with so much facial hair. <laughs> All dropping in from the start here. All four athletes. Wow, Chase, that was smooth. All of them looking good, but that was really smooth from Chase. It was. He took his time, made sure he was level, evenly set. Oh, oh, yes. 6.35 for Chase and Brian. Mike Dell Mike on lane Dell. one did that the fastest out of everyone so far. Maybe not time-wise, but the time it took for the bar to leave the ground and to go to lockout. That second bar for Mike Dell was much that was better, smoother than his first bar. I, I love when that happens. Come and see the third bar in this heat. Come on, Mike Dell. Big point for Mike. Nailed that second one. Yes. Yeah. Oh. oh, it looked like it was going. I feel like it was. I wonder why. Maybe he's losing his grip. Those hips are fried. Sometimes you got to take that risk and keep pulling because getting that back off the floor. But he knows his own body, so. Well, you have the two phases of the deadlift, right? You have below the knee, it's a lot of a leg push. Yep. And once that bar gets above the knee, it's the hips extending forward. Yep. And maybe his hips are feeling a little fried. After both events yesterday, they're very hip involved. Yep. So we have heat number seven, Victor Ligman of Sweden in lane number one, Joshua Pinkerton of USA in lane two, Luke Sinagra USA in lane three, and Tyler Davis USA lane four. Sweden and USA. Luke Sinagra and Tyler. Pinkerton closely behind and Victor. A little bit of a lean from Joshua Pinkerton there, but locks it out nonetheless. Both Tyler and Joshua on that third bar, and Luke. And on that third bar, can we see? Oh! 
Tyler Davis nice. Tyler gets the hit. Davis. That was nice. Yes. 15, is he going to go for this last bar? He's got to be quick if he wants to get it. Moving on that 10 seconds now. Come on, Tyler, let's see it. No, he knows there's not enough time. No point wasting energy when there's not time because exactly. you're not going to finish the rep. There's just no point. And you have one more event today to constitute who makes it to the final and who doesn't. Exactly. Heat number eight. Lane one will be Sean Pope of Canada. Lane two, Keith Cherry of USA. Lane three, Jeffrey Coe of USA. And lane number four, Jake Hammer, USA. We still got a few heats to go. Can any, anyone take the lead from Nick O'Hare with five bars and 35.63 seconds? He'll be hard pressed to do so. That'll be hard, but Keith Cherry in lane two is flying through this. Already. No straps, but he is really jerking that bar up. And if he makes it to bar five, I don't see that being a good technique to work for him. I agree. But obviously a good deadlifter. He might just change his technique when it comes yeah. to that bar period. Exactly, he might know that he can use that in the first three. Let's see here. Yeah, so he called it there. That's not going to work on those heavier bars. He's really got to sit down and to use those legs. Nope. Still no one beating Nick. Oh, oh. Nick the untouchable. I seen him compete at the Chaos Classic this year. He He's an incredible athlete. Talking about Nick O'Hare? Yeah. Yeah. He's a great, he's a great guy. I love him. With two heats left, heat number nine, lane one, Michael Emelson of Sweden. Lane number two, Ryan Largay, USA. Lane number three, Nikolai Myers. And lane number four, Andrew Haynes, USA. All of these guys, amazing contenders. Some of them we got to see finish yesterday with a bit of a dissatisfied look on their face. Here we go. Nick Myers, the first one up. Lane one to three, on to the second bar. 288 kilos. Ryan Largay. On to that seven plate bar, bar number three. Come on, yes. Come on, Nick. Now we go, Nick. Taking his time there. Now we go. The energy from this crowd today, I absolutely love it. Come on, Nick. Pull we'll see if they can keep that energy for the second half. I have no doubt. Nick Myers gets bar three, and Ryan Largue really taking his time. 10 seconds, he should have already been strapped up. I don't yeah, know if that's he's enough time. Not, it, you can wait. But, right decision, yeah, he, but yeah. he should have went into it a little bit quicker there, because he was doing well. He might have been feeling himself already a bit too fatigued anyways. Yeah. It's one thing for us to try to think what's going on in the athlete's mind, but it might be a completely different story. Yeah, I'm like that when I'm coaching. I'm like, yeah. keep going, keep going. Then I'm like, when it's me, I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know nothing. You don't know what I'm feeling. <laughs> Our final heat, heat 10, in lane number one, Pierre Alain Champagne of Canada. In lane number two, Gardar Olofsson of Iceland. In lane number three, Philip Zajicek, Czech Republic. And lane number four, Gavin McNamee of Ireland. Now we've seen Gavin's speed yesterday on that frame. Wow. That was blistering fast, that like was, watching a bolt of lightning streak across the it sky. It was. Can we see that same speed today? I think so. That was a good testament of back power. We're he about has to that find stance. out. Here we go. No straps. Yep. But well, we're gonna see you called it. it. Are we going to see five bars? Can he beat Nick O'Hare? Gavin I'd love McNamee. To see it. I'd love to see it. Come on, Gavin. The wow. bars have not slowed down. On to 705. Big Throwing Ireland in lane now. four. Come on, Gavin. 
Beautiful. Just as fast as the first three. On to the 740. He's gonna have to be Chasing quick. Nick O'Hare. Come on. His straps are taking a bit too long. He will not beat Nick, but if he gets it, it is massive points. Gavin McNamee. Wow, yes. What a contestant for this category. Finishing about 39 seconds, does not complete it fast enough to beat Nick O'Hare, but our only other man to get that fifth and final bar. Big points for Ireland right there. Absolutely. What's the word? Incredible. It's incredible. That Drink. was, I knew that was gonna be fast. I mean, we called it. We called it, we knew it. You probably guessed it at home. We've seen that power, back power and speed yesterday in the frame. He looks so good. And I'm wondering if he watches the footage, compares it with Nick O'Hare's. Maybe he second guesses his strapping up for that final bar. Maybe not. I mean, these athletes are obviously very well trained, but it was the time that he took to strap up that cost him that yep. finishing place against Nick O'Hare, not his strength. Yep. Congratulations, Nick O'Hare, taking the win on that event. He will, is the leader shirt going by overall points now or by the winner I of the I believe it's event? by overall place. Overall points, okay. okay. Well, then here we go. Our men's under 90 official scores, Nick O'Hare, all five bars in 35.63 seconds. Gavin McNamee, just shy of that placing with 40.14 seconds in second place. Shane German, four bars in 27.53 points. That's big points for Shane, it he is. needed it. And also for Derek Owens, narrowly behind Shane in fourth place, four bars in 28.49 seconds. Tyler Davis and Volker Bauer in fifth and sixth also complete all four bars. Every other athlete on that list through 10th place only gets the first three bars. And the three bars extends from 11th place down to 20th. Jacob McBride, three bars in 26.78 seconds, really tuning out the pain from his torn hand yesterday. And Victor Lingman, three bars in 39.29 seconds. Close. Nick Myers and Marimu Ahipene were the only two athletes on this list, 21st through 30th, to get three bars. The remaining athletes could only muster up the strength to get those two initial bars. And Chase McGee, Diego Valenzuela, Andrew Haynes, and Mike Dell will complete two bars and get a good score there. Jake Hammer, all the way through Luke Young, complete one bar and earn valuable points. This is a weight category where there are 39 athletes. That's 39 potential points up for grabs there. Reasons. In our men's under 90 category, lane one, Nicholas Lindroth of Sweden. Lane two, Joshua Miles of USA. And lane three, Luke Young of Scotland. Yeah, look at the speed of these athletes. Josh and Luke both very, very quick with the first sandbag. Look at Luke Young going around the other he side. He really accelerated through that second phase with the what two do you stone think of sandbag. That? With Luke Young right there, he made it a point to put his whistle there. Interesting, interesting. It doesn't seem to be affecting anything. It was deliberate and yeah. intentional. He's obviously thought about it. And obviously our only man of this heat to finish. Yep, it was. So worked. far. Blows. But Laws, thank you for joining me for commentating on no this one. No worries at all. I will we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Enjoy the rest of it. And you enjoy We're your time go as well. I cheer hope that these guys on. Yeah, I'm going to cheer these guys on. You and I are both going to turn the mics over to Nicola and Dan, oh, the man, the flash behind us, and let them commentate for a bit. But again, thanks for being here, Laws. You're very welcome. Speak to you guys soon. Hello. How are we? Gear. We are back. So we're at the under 90 kilo. There it okay, is. Okay, I'm good. They couldn't, couldn't hear me. Couldn't hear me. We don't want that, do we? We want to hear me speaking, obviously. 
Right, so are the under 90 kilo category for men. You used to be in this category, didn't you, Dan? I did indeed, yeah. Okay. Um, competed against a lot of these guys. So it's very interesting to see him go with this event. This event is an absolute killer. Um, just just the lactic buildup, I think, in the legs. So when they get to that sled, the lactic acid in the legs is going to be absolutely screaming. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the only real time the backpack adds something. Or, or it gives you a little bit of hindrance, I suppose, is the, is the transition. Okay. So we found a lot of people that train this event, um, the carries were fine. Once they've got the implement up, the, the backpack actually helps the carry. But then the transition is where it really hits the legs. Because yeah. you, you're running with, what, I think they're, they're 80 pounds. So they're running with 40 kilo extra Jeez, on the back. Oh. So it's essentially like they're 130 kilo athletes. That's insane. And tell me something, we were discussing this, me and Gabe. When you go down to pick up that low pickup on the tombstone bag, the Roosevelt style bag, that backpack, it, it obviously is going to have some movement. Yeah. Does that throw you off, picking that low pickup? It does, yeah. yeah, but you can also re rearrange the weights in the back as you go. So if, you, if you're aggressive with your pickup, okay. it's going to make sure that the weights move for you. If you're not right. aggressive with the pickup, the weight's going to dominate you as you go down. I see. And athletes that we've got here, who do you know? Who are you aware of on this, in this uh, heat? Dar Dargis of the USA, who's lane two, which happens... There he is, he's up with that, he's up with that, who's about and he's going well. If he can get to this drive, he'll be fast. So he needs to just go, get it in and go. This is where you can get aggressive with this. Yeah. This event, you just get aggressive with that sled and it's going to come, see? He's moving. Yes. And you can use the backpack as well. If you lean back into that backpack, it's gonna, the sled's going to come with you. Because again, yeah. you've got that extra 40 kilos with you. And look at him, look at him go. Amazing finish. So, he's not leaning back too much there. We've seen people really lean back into it. He kind of put his hips back more and was more of a lean forward. So he used the weight of the backpack though. So that yeah. that, that backpack was carrying him. Right, okay. So if he leaned if he leaned too far back, the backpack is gonna take him onto the floor, which is right, what we've okay. seen again. We've seen some of the athletes fall. We've seen like some people slip, whereas he used the backpack perfectly there. To sort of okay. count the weight and, and almost just glided. He looked like he was gliding at times with that did, slip, that so that was super fast. Pretty flawless and hopefully some of the athletes that are about to come on are watching people as they do that and realize maybe leaning back as you said is not the way to go yeah so who we got up next then what heat are we on now i think we're to heat three there we go you read them out then Let's well go. we got chris redford from new zealand in one we've got vincent maselli from the usa in two chase mcgee from the usa again in three and caesar, caesar sierra from the usa in, in four okay again Let's i've been impressed with caesar over this 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 weekend so far Progressive athlete looks looks quite conditioned, so we'll yep. see. This is um, a big category to be in as well. Yeah, and it's so tight with the points. I think there's more than that. No, there's not. This is yeah. the whole list. But if you actually run down the points, I think we were we were totaling it from first down to 16th can still qualify for the finals wow. if like everyone goes well. That is so incredible. it's going to be a matter of seconds when these top top guys come on. They're going to be so so fast. I'm really enjoying this event. It's, a, it's really, really fun. I've never seen nothing like this before. It's a good event. It really is, and I like I like the sandbag stone. It yeah. just adds a little bit more extra to it. It does. Because no one's ever made those or had these like, to train with, so it's, it's making the athletes think on the feet, which it is. is quite good. And it's showing the real strength exactly. in the athlete there, that they can adapt. For sure. Sandbag. There you go. All you need there, you don't need to get that hoosa bag so high. Okay. All you need is a grip on it and you can carry it. You're moving 15 meters. Once it's in that sled, now we can get aggressive. Yeah. You just need to make that 15 meters. And he's off oh, wow. and he's doing that same like you yeah. said, that not too far leaning back. Really, what a good speed that Hip, is. There. Hips back and just using that bag. Yeah. Using it, what a run. Yes. Get over. Come really on. good. Beautiful. I think we're going to have a fin finish from Vincent as well. Yes, we are. If he goes, don't bend them arms. Come uh, on, pull into pull. Keep you can them do arms it. straight. He's still got time. He has got time. He's going to make it. He's got that sled moving again, yeah. He's got so it. He's one big it. pullover. Come on, man. There we go. We are seeing a lot of athletes struggle with this big bar. Yep. Why do you think that is? It's got no movement. So it's the Husserveld stone shape, but it's got no movement in it. Yeah, that's so right. So it's so solid. Um, and it's just an awkward shape. It is and very with awkward. with the counter balance of the backpack that you've got on as well, 
as you said, it's, it's a sort of lower pickup. It's a very so, low pickup. So you don't you don't want to fall over. You don't want to lose your balance. You don't want to let the backpack dominate you. Yeah. Usually with a bag like this, and or a Husserfield shield, shield or stone, it is from a heightened pickup. Exactly. So, yeah, you can see a lot of people struggle. However, not impossible because we have seen it being done. Exactly. Right, so who have we got next? So in this heat coming up, we have got Mike Dell from England in lane one, Jake Hamer from the USA in lane two, Jeffrey Cole from the USA in three, and Josh Lancaster um, in, from England in lane four. Josh. We all know Josh, we love Josh. I expect Josh has found some extremely weird and wonderful ways to train this event, as we know. <laughs> he um, definitely has. He won't have done it conventionally, so it'll be interesting to see if his methods are going to pay off here, because... Um, and one thing I know about Josh is he, he will grit and grind until the last second, even yes. if he's not finished the event. So He always does. Yeah. Uh, he's great to watch. Yeah. Very great athlete, great to watch. Also, a, a former finals, right, finalist from OSG is Mike Dell. Uh, in lane one, so good watching. Mike's, Mike's got good condition. He's very consistent as a strong man, so this will be interesting. Okay, so all four lanes have yeah, no loaded that first bag. Struggling with that at the, the Atlas Stone bag at the moment. It no. Seems to be a good grip and rip for these guys. And then, as you say, it's, it's the trunk card of the of the Husa bag really that's, that's getting people. Now we've got Jake in lane two, who's got it pretty yes. high up, and he's got a good grip on there. So I think he's going to get that to the end. Then he's going to get straight on that. Sled he's making drag. a great facial there as well. Oh, that's, yeah. a, that's an awesome face. Tongue out or tongue in? <laughs> I think it was a bit of both. <laughs> Yeah, That's and he's it. got that drive. Again, he's using that hips back he and just leaning, not, not leaning too far back and letting that extra 40 kilo carry him to the finish line. He has got Metcons on there. There we go. As well. So we're speaking about footwear. There's not much people been wearing Metcons. I don't think they've got great grip all the time. It's, 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 it's trumping the athletes a little bit because in the back, it's quite dusty. It's, there's a lot of chalk flying about. Okay. And, you know, they're, they're having to try and find something that they can that they can grip to. So footwear yeah. choice is, is stumping a lot of people. Because when you get out here, the lane's clean. Yes. The lanes yeah. are fine. There's, there's nothing about. So what, what, we, what we've tended to do with our athletes in the back is just bring a wet towel, yeah. dry their feet off, and wear what you've worn for training. Yeah. So that's probably why he went with the Metcons, because yeah. he's trained in them. He's trained in them, eight, yeah. Eight to 12 week block, whatever, of this event. You don't want to throw yourself off on comp day by changing your footwear, changing your kit, no. changing. So to do what's familiar, and it's going to drag you through that event. What foot would you, foot, footwear, sorry, I can't get my words out. What footwear would you choose for this? Something like a trail shoe, you know, like a climbing trainer. Yeah. I never say not climbing shoe. Don't get don't get mixed up with what you'd wear for a truck pull, but like yeah. a climbing trainer, something with a bit of extra tread on it, and it's just gonna it's gonna stick to the surface a bit more. I don't think you can go too wrong. Okay. Unless, I mean, unless you've got like a, a lifting shoe on, that's not gonna work. Yeah, but. that's not that's not gonna <laughs> do any favors. Okay, who yeah. is in our next heat then, Dan? So coming in up in lane one, we've got Luke Sin Sinagra from the USA in the heat. Lane two, Joshua Pinkerton, again from the USA. Lane three is Jacob McBride from the USA. And number four is Yanni Rautinen from Finland. Oof. I know Yanni will be good at this event. He is, yeah. yes. He's hey. got that sort of Finnish grip, you know, you remember. Yeah, sure, we've got Jacob McBride as well. I think these are all going to be competitors yeah. for this one. Pretty fast, pretty solid pickup on that first bag. We're getting towards the guys now that can make finals, so this is where the heats yes. are going to really start to, to, to speed up and everyone's going to want to sort of bring it and, and beat that lead time, so... 100%, and got... that's what we've been seeing across the board, is as we get further down the list, yeah. the standards are getting higher and higher each time. Yoni's taking a bit of a different tactic with that sled. That was I the mean, same as Ben Donnan, who did that yeah. kind of side lean, and it's working. It seems to be working real well for him. Is he going to beat Chris Rutherford's time of 38.59? I don't know. No, it looks like he's about 45 seconds there. So that, that time's holding up. That like, time is holding up, Chris. That was from the third heat as well, so that's holding up real well. Yeah, 38.59 is the time to beat. Oh, we've got Jake. Jake, is that lane three that we're in now? This is lane two. So Joshua struggling with that stone bag. I know Josh has had a big cut for this event as well, so maybe in That's, terms of yeah. getting towards this this time on day two, he might start really feeling that now. Yeah, I think so he's going to leave it there. If yeah. he's had that big weight cut, then his energy might be de quite depleted and um, just struggling with the cardio a little bit at the end there. But 
He'll get a distance. He'll he still will. Be, he'll still be happy with that. He'll still get in some points. 100%. Every bit counts here because you still can get this, points. This oh, event, it's your man, look. This, he is going to be wild. So I, could, also I got, could see it in him backstage. Yeah, he is going to go feral, as we say. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's Mr. Shane Germain in uh, lane four. Nick O'Hare as well is one to watch on this. Um, yes. He's a beast. He was second at World's Strongest Man under 90 kilo wow. in 2021. Actually level on points with the overall winner, Nikolai Myers, but, mm -hmm. you know, he was second on the stones, so... Amazing. As World's Strongest Man rules are, whoever wins the stones, if it's a tie, wins the event. Exactly. So, yeah, um, wants to watch here, definitely a shame and Nick. Um, but I know Sean Pope can move as well in, in lane one. So we've got Sean Pope in lane one from Canada. Lane two is Mikhail Nilsson from Sweden. Lane three, as I said, Nico Hare from the USA. And lane four is Shane Germain from the United Kingdom. Here we go. This is going to be and a good I round, know, people. I know he has trained this event hard. I I've, been, I've been watching him. Yeah, he has. And he, he likes a moving event, doesn't he? He does. He loves a moving event. He's wanted to claw it back today, so I'm excited to watch this. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Definitely going to keep my eye on Nick throughout this whole thing as well. There we go, it's a good there pick go. from them two. Look at oh, them. There you go, those two are fast. Them. Yes, it's and all about these transitions now. Oh, he's, they're fast, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, this now, is where oh. he needs a good rip. Come if on, he get, can it get a rip on it. Oh, Nick just taking that lead. Yeah, he is, but Shane's coming back. With, oh, look at those Ooh. feet. Look at oh. those fast feet. Go. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Now he's in. Now he's got to get feral with this drag. This he's is where I've said to everyone get, get aggressive. It. Just get oh, hella aggressive. Yeah, he's moving. He's moving. He's Watch on that this. clock. Come on, don't Look at Nick now. bringing this back, though. This is a strong heat. This, this is, is amazing. This is a strong heat. He's got it. He's got it yeah, in the back. Yeah, there yes. he goes. What a run. Well done. Nick just right behind him. What a run. Beautiful. And then we've got these two. We have got Miguel I'm and Sean neck and neck. I'm Who's still unsure if we're going to be within the lead times there. Chris Reddiford's time is hella hard. Holding That's up there, super so fast. Yep, super fast. 38.59 is a, is a wild time. Four finishers there. Well done, guys. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, I kind of took my eyes off the other two lanes because of those two going so close with each other. It was there. Uh, I mean, it's. It's big props to finish that event for, for that every good. lane. I think that's our first heat that's finished. Everyone's finished, Yeah, right? that's so correct, yep. Now we're moving. I think Shane is going to be very happy with that. Oh, I think so. Good. He did well. That was fast. Like we said, Nickel here, he was fast, but not fast enough in that heat to beat Shane. So let's see what that time was. We'll get that in a minute. Now, now coming up here in, uh, in lane one from New Zealand, I can't say his name, I just call him Nah. <laughs> That'll do. So he is the world's strongest man from 2019, under 90 kilo. Amazing. Former CrossFit Games athlete as well. Really? So in oh. 2019, when I'm going to say we had a harder medley than this, we had three implements, same sled. Okay. But it was a uh, sandbag, keg, and a piece of that stone. Oh, yeah. This guy did it in 42 seconds, and it was the lead time by 20 seconds across every single heat of the wow. games. Wow. So, he is definitely one to watch here. And Andrew Haynes as well in lane two from the USA. I actually coach Andrew. He's oh. a former military man. So when they when they released this event with the rooks on, the rook is a is American military back. Yes. So he was said, I did this in my sleep for 15 years. Good going, man. Going back and forth with a rook on. So I'm expecting something from Andrew here as well. And as, as we said with the last heat, this is where the guys can really step up and make finals. Yeah, so this definitely. is where it's... You're going to see some quick, quick times. And in lane three, we've got Keith Cherry. And in lane four, we've got Lee Shaw from Australia. Again, Keith is a former finalist at, I think, former podium at the under 90 kilo class at OSG as well. And Lee Shaw had a really, really good comp at the Chaos Classic. Um, he did. Australia's strongest man. Yep, there we go. This is going to be another good run. This is going to be still haven't beat that super time from fast. Chris. No, so Chris so Redford's still taking that time. Here we go, here we Fast go. Fast picks from everyone. Ooh. There we go. Oh, Keith, Keith must have had an injury there. Keith's not happy. That's a shame. Look at the, look at the speed across the floor from, from Nara pick and up. Andrew. Yeah, really solid pickups from those three. Oh, my God. He heat. is fast. Yeah, here's now going. Right, let's go. Come on, get it done. Come right, on. He's going to pull this light down in. I'm sure. He's going to get feral with it. Yeah, there he goes. Look at him go. Slight lean into it. And look at Andrew. Oh, my oh. word. Look at Andrew's feet go. Oh, oh here he goes. 
He's opened the door. Oh, here goes Andrew. Yes. Yes, he's what a that. run. Is that going to... I think that's going to beat the 38.59. I think it is. I think that is going to beat the 38.59 there, Nick. Well, I looked over at the clock in the arena, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was 40 seconds, but that was a couple of seconds of... There he goes. Yes, well <laughs> done. Incredible. I'm, I'm I love him. that. He's my client, so I'm happy. <laughs> well done, you. You've taught him well. <laughs> That's, that wow. is awesome. What a run. And let's not forget Lee Shaw's just finished that in a really good time as well as now. Yeah, sorry, we got a bit excited. So we there. got a bit excited yeah, with, with Andrew's that, finish. That was uh, nail-biting, but yeah, yeah, Lee Shaw, everyone there. His speed on the sled then was absolutely out of this world. Incredible. Right, He's our next, uh, next heat, let us know who's in it. So in lane one, we've got Ollie Clark from the United Kingdom. In lane two, we've got Aiden Howe from the USA. In lane three, Volker Bauer from Germany. And in lane four, it's Victor Lingman from Sweden. Now think, yeah, Volker and Victor currently have a, a top 10 spot. So they are in the top 10. That, we just got confirmation that Andrew's time was the lead time. He has beaten Chris's time there, so. Wow. It'll be interesting to see what comes up. But. Yeah, what exact time is that? Oh, we look like we've got a little bit of a uh, Oh, Ollie was just in the wrong lane there. And then we saw a cross he He's comes. coming back over to one. And we are all set up. Good to go once Ollie gets in place. So I think you'll probably find that the winner of this heat will make finals. So this is what these guys need to know now. If they win their heat, they're going to make finals. So. Amazing to see Andrew's time on the screen there. 38.09 wow. to beat. Wow. I don't, don't know. Can it be beaten? It's going to be hard. That's it's going to be, be tough hard. to beat that time. These guys have set off well. This is going to be a strong heat. I think everyone's going to finish, and I think it's going to be a touch. Like, oh, Victor up with fast, it well. Yeah, Victor's Victor. Sweden's strongest man under 90 kilos. Wow, look at Ollie Clark, though. Ollie's he... second at Europe's under 90 kilos. He was, yeah. So he's got a point to prove he really wants to make the final here. And Come he's on. moving. I think he's going to take Victor here. We've got Aiden oh, we've got as well. Aiden in the front oh, there. Oh, let's go, Fighting Ollie. for that. Come on, Ollie. Oh, my God, this is so close. Get on oh, that line. Oh, oh no. Ollie. Ollie, no! Oh, and Victor's gone across. Quick, 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 quick. Ollie takes oh. it over Volker, but. Oof. Hell, man, this is going to be close. This, this oh. is why I'm so tired. It's so stressful. <laughs> it's just. It, it happens, and when you're dragging that sled, and if you get that too much of a lean on, and you're just going to go. Yeah, you, you can't... start seeing people coming towards you, you panic, lean back exactly. a bit more. Exactly, and, and then you're, down. you're just taking it. Oh, this next So he nine. In lane one, we've got Philip Zadzicek again. Philip's one of my clients. Philip's 18 years old. Okay? 18? He turned 17. He turned 18, sorry, a month ago. Eight, wow. He's won Ultimate World's Strongest Man under 90 kilos. He's won the Arnold Europe under 90 kilos. And now he's here to make a point at the wow. OSG. But he is 18 years old. This is crazy. That's and in, incredible. In lane two, a really strong athlete in Ryan Lage. Lane three, Derek Owens again. Derek a Owens. Very, very fast, very, very fast. conditioned athlete. And in lane four, the 2021 um, under 90 kilo world's strongest man, Nikolai Myers. Yep. So again, this is, again, we've said it, this heat is going to be wild again. Oh, let's go. It's just these last four heats have nice had me on the edge of my seat. Can't. We actually can't sit back. We're right on the edge, leaning on the table. So excited, as you can probably hear. I think what's going to win this one is the transitions. I'm going to call it now. Who can get back quick enough? Let's go, let's go. Nice high pickup from Derek there. Philip, I think, hits him down first. Yes, yeah, he is. Yeah, Philip down into first. Can he skip He's got his bag pace? choked up there. Interesting. Oh, got oh Nikolai. Nikolai taking it. Oh, Philip. Fila. He's fast. But interesting that he's choked his bag up there, Nick. And his stone, look. Yes. Just to make sure he's got that extra grip. Here he goes. Come now on. we go. Neck look neck at this. Derek's on. just falling behind Nikolai and Philip. It's really close. Oh, oh, I think it's going to be Nikolai. Is I it? I think it's Nikolai. It yeah. Is. Oh, oh. Then Philip. Oh, Derek, better hurry up. Pull this No, head. Derek. Ryan's coming in. Oh. oh, Derek got him, but only just, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my. Well, that was a dramatic right. finish. That was, that was. I think. In, if he had just else. run those two implements and then dragged the sled, his brain would be foggy there, and his brain yeah. has told him, try and pull the sled over whilst I'm on the ground. 
if his brain wasn't foggy from all that, I think he'd have probably just got up and pulled yeah. it over first time. Yeah. But that's the thing with the event. You just you, at this stage you wouldn't have been able to think. He yeah. was only thinking about finishing. Yeah, and um, then he goes down. Yeah. Oh, we have our last heat here, and this is uh, going to be another good one. Again, yeah. Who have we got? So we've got. Garoa Olofsson from Iceland. We've got Gavin McNee in lane two from Ireland. We've got Pierre Elaine Champagne. There you, ooh, there you go. Uh, from Canada in lane three. And Tyler Davis, uh, who is the current world's strongest man under 90 kilos he in sure lane is. four. So, and he's got that gold leader shirt on. So. He does. I'm loving the leader shirt. Yeah. I love it's a really the cool shirt. addition for the guys that, that, that get to have one of those shirts. It's a great memory. It's a great memory. It's also, you know, sets that fire for the other athletes, knowing yeah. that that's the leader. Yeah. I want to take that shirt. Catch, right? I want that shirt. Yeah. Yeah, we've got Gavin, who's proved to be very a fast. A speed demon. He let's is. Say, yeah. And that deadlift from him today as well. Yeah. Wow. Ridiculous. Yeah, I think t I'm going to call this for Gavin now. Right, I'm going right, to go out on my go out on my sword and call it for Gavin. Here we go. Look at those feet. I mean. Yeah. Incredible, but Tyler also. You can never count Tyler fast. out of anything. No. He is just so consistent at every event, and he will hang around. Oh, big master That's pickle a great there from Gavin. Gav. Can he keep hold of it though? He'd love it. What? Yes, he has. That's again, as what I said is just keep hold of that bag. It doesn't need to be the perfect carry, and he's in. Here he goes. Oh, come on. I he think he's going to tell. Oh, he's going. He's moving that sled. He's he moving away moving. from them. That's incredible the speed. The guards are here as well. He's picking up the pace. Oh, almost Olufsen. in front of Pierre. Olufsen. Oh, 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 my. Ooh. What a Ooh. comeback. I think. Oh, you think Olufsen's taking second there? I think so. And maybe Tyler fourth. 34.79 for Gav. Andrew Hayne is taking second in 38.09. Chris Redford, who was out in the third heat, his time stood for a long time at 38.59 in the third. Amazing. I mean, we were right. Yeah. Gad Gad Olufsen took I, second I in that he heat. Did. Yeah, he, with a 38.63. He swooped in there, and then we got Aiden yeah. and Nikolai after that. Then Tyler coming in seventh in that then, event. Then Pierre, then Victor. Then Philip. The, yeah. So and yeah, that's, what that's else a big have we got? Here we go. Nah, in eleventh, Shane down in twelfth. Yeah, Lee, Lee Shaw's Shaw. in the thirteenth. Ollie Clark fourteenth at forty-two point one eight. And at twentieth we have got Ryan Vargi at forty-eight point eight four. Okay. And then Derek in, in 19th there, that, 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 that four really cost Derek. Yeah, and then we can see at the bottom there we have 28th, 29th and 30th going with the distance um, of 70.97, 74.4 and 67 feet. And then we have the rest of them have also um, just got a distance and sadly did not complete the run, but... Points are points. Points are points. Points are points. There's so a very strong category there, though, with a lot, a lot of finishes. Probably the most finishes we've seen across the categories. I agree. Um, it's been an amazing category throughout this under-90s. They have really, really stood out for me in this competition. They did. We had a tie for 10th place going into the finals here on day three. Derek Owens tied for 10th place, and as every athlete has earned their spot with every turn, Derek Owens will make his way into the final we will have an 11 man category here and that changes the point spacing a lot because of all the points reflecting now based off of as if those 11 men competed against themselves dan how does that change the field as we watch ollie clark here it's unbelievable derek's a fantastic bag thrower as well so he's going to really shake this finals up but here we go with ollie ollie can throw as well oh my word he's just thrown from standing they are traveling i like oh I like his tactic there, so throw the light ones from far out. We have seen a lot of athletes yeah. hit those light bags from far out, yeah. but some of them don't know when to kind of get closer on those heavy oh, bags, and it costs them. There he goes. It's just sneaking over. Have we talked about what happens if one gets stuck on top? If it gets stuck, <laughs> I mean, it would be hard to do with how thin that bar yeah, is, but, but if it gets stuck on top, they do get the points okay. because it did technically go up, and yeah. Yeah. I mean, they got it there. But if it does fall backwards, that is not a rep. Yeah. I think now with his trajectory on that bag, though, he's probably too close. Just a bit. And oh, all yeah. those tosses are lost energy. Oh. 
you've got a finite time with bad toss. Same with keg toss when you probably do it, Gabe. Like you have a finite time of how many good throws you've got in you. Then it just saps the body. And Dan, what's your take on the wind up toss? Are you a personal advocate of it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? No, I like to drag and just throw from one. Um, grip it and rip it. Grip it and rip it. I think it, Bill yeah. Kazmaier was a fan of that. Yeah, exactly. If you've got your swing through right on the first shot, shot you should be able to just grip and rip rather than those wind up throws can go wrong, especially with the bags because they're so slack. The handle, if you wind up and sort of swing through, the, the slack in the handle can really take control of you. Um, and then that bag's just going to go straight up in the air or straight out forward. Um, Heat number two takes the arena floor in lane one. Philip Zazicek of the Czech Republic. And in lane number two, Victor Lingman of Sweden. Got a fully European heat here. Um, I, I, I mentioned this on the live stream yesterday. Philip's only 18 years old. Wow, one um, of our youngest competitors here. Yeah, and he's made finals. And he's there going with the throws. Wow. Oh, yes, Philip. Oh, yes. 18 years old, guys. Oh, just barely just missing that toss. His technique's sound, though. He's really in. Oh. Victor catching him now. Both onto that fifth bag. Now I think is where they'll find, it'll be a miracle I think if anyone gets one over now because they're just zapped. A miracle is a great way to put it my friend. They <laughs> yeah. need to brace, collect, compose themselves. Yeah, I think Philip. at this stage it's probably just worth just banking on getting one. You've got one throw left in you. I think they're done now. I just, yeah, that's, that's it for them. They're just zapped. You can see it now, you've just got that finite amount of energy, that finite amount of explosive fibers ready to go and being stage side right here we're seeing every toss just get a little lower and yep. lower but they are relentless and they go till their time expires i'm very impressed with our czech athletes here both yep. philip and then andre and the heavyweight yeah. opens i yeah. mean uh, many people don't know but the second half of my heritage i know i carry the mexican flag at giants i'm proud of my culture from living in south texas but my mother's side of the family is Czech, and I have been very inspired to go see that side of the country. I've never been there, but that side of the world. We are going to see something here from yeah. Andrew, Andrew yeah. Haynes. This guy Heat can number throw three. a sandbag. <laughs> yes, Andrew um, Haynes. Mr. Haynes strength himself in lane yeah. one, and Nikolai Myers of the USA in lane number two. There's a famous video from OSG in 21, Haynes against Tommy Lavelle in the 80 kilo category, and it was neck and neck, sort of 16 second run. It's Haynes really boomed out the the floor yesterday with the celebration yeah <laughs> i think we could see it here today as well because he is clearing that he is clearing that by some way oh wow look at this go nikolai's matching him though nikolai's catching he is Andrew onto the last bag here we go here Anus. he goes there we go andrew anus incredible throwing he was flawless then hit flawless for hit indeed. for hit Absolutely flawless. Nikolai can hit really good points if he gets this bag, though. That's about a 20-second finish from Andrew. We'll get the official time. Incredible. Nick Myers reaching that 40-second mark. Plenty of time for big points. Really good. Oh, maybe needs to just get that a little bit closer if he can. I think he's about right. He's, he's set it up nice and close. He just needs to rip it. One last one. Ah, again, we just saw he was zapped. I think once you lose that flow as well on the bags, it, it really takes its toll. Having to recompose and reset for another throw when you're out of that sort of flow state is, is really tough. That was a perfect run from Andrew. Unbelievable. Like, like I just spoke about the flow state, he was in that flow state and everything just moved exactly the same. Light bag to heavy bag, the technique was exactly the same. There was no change in it, and they just all flew over. I reckon if you looked at the grouping on the floor, that's how I always judge a good bag toss run. If all the bags land in the same place, you've, you've smashed it. Heat Here's number four takes the arena floor. We have three to go. This is Derek Owens in lane one of the USA and Gardar Olafsson of Iceland in lane number two. So Derek got the call to do this event about five minutes ago, hence why he's still in jeans <laughs> and boots. Something to prove. He's got something. And look at him go. He's already on to that fifth bag. He's a Texan like myself. Oh jeans my and boots word. are the way we go. Oh, Derek my Owens, God. 16 second oh finish. Oh, my God. He... He has got the call up to compete in this final five minutes ago. 
five minutes he's got. Derek Owens. And he has just come out and torn that bag toss to pieces. I dare anyone to try to take that away from Derek. He's getting here. He has earned it and proven it. Wow. Gardner Olsen giving his all. What a run that was from Derek. He is going to be pumped with that. Oh, yes. Olafsson. Wow. 10 seconds. Wow. He's just gone against everything I've said for the last 10 minutes and <laughs> missed some throws and then reloaded and got a 45 pound bag. Wow. I mean <laughs> but Owens, that is going to be one of the big stories here. Yeah. His performance on this bag toss. And like you said, still wearing his pants, still wearing his boots, a true Texan with that buckle right there. <laughs> I love it. Derek Owens of Battle Axe Barbell. Just, I'm just surprised he didn't have the bolo tie on as well. That's that was the only <laughs> missing thing, right? Or Trey Mitchell's hat. That was what we needed yeah, right yeah, there. There we go. But that wow. was fly off with the bike toss, so. What was the time? 17.5 wow. seconds from Derek Owens, wow. our new event leader. Sub 20 seconds. Just incredible. That is insane. Our second to last heat, Aiden Howell of the USA in lane one and Pierre Alain Champagne of Canada. I have been so impressed with Pierre. It's a name I didn't know from the under 90s. Having competed in this category for nearly 10 years as well, it's, Pierre's a name I've never seen, so super impressive. All these guys making light work of those few, first few bags. Those 35s and 40s are just flying. It's where... The 45 and the 50 is where it's going to get tough for these guys. Pierre's making mincemeat of this, though. Really, now he's just composing himself. He knows that that sixth and final bag is going to be great points. I like Pierre's approach here. Yeah. Not feeling too rushed after watching Owens, but giving it his all and falling a bit short with lateral distance. I think now if he can just take his time again, he's got one, one good throw left in him, I think. How old is Sending that bag into the standard. You might not be able to see this, but Pierre's looking at the clock that we've got here in the arena and really pacing himself. Shows great intelligence on the comp floor. Oh. So close. <sighs> Aiden really going for it as well. Oh my God. Repeatedly dancing on the edge. Oh. Great runs though from those guys. That 50 pound bag is no joke. 22.5 kilos for those Brits at home. Throwing it over... 15 feet which is 4.6 meters that is something that's throwing a yeah. large child over <laughs> 15 feet that's nuts i think that was my weight when i was about 10 years old <laughs> <laughs> that, that puts it into perspective my friend heat number six our final heat lane one tyler davis of the usa and lane number two gavin mcnamee of ireland dan what do you think do we see Derek owens lightning fast time smashed i can't see it i just think he was so flawless with that run that he was you know he's just blitzed everyone out of the park because Hainus's run was incredible and he beat him by four seconds so this is just this insane bag tossing pressure's on we need to see if that pressure results in recklessness here absolutely Gavin's got a really good lead in this category as well so he's going to want to cement that with this event so he can go into stones nice and relaxed but you've got Tyler who is just super consistent on every event he just won't go away Gavin's throwing really well here though I don't think we're in that 16 second mark yet, but Gavin is flowing. I think he's done enough now just to get those good points and set himself up for stones for a nice confident stone run. Now it's, the 30 seconds have gone, so now it's just the time to relax. They know that, they know that sixth bag is gonna be huge points. It's gonna put them in third if they get that sixth bag because we've had those two finishes in a super time, but no one else has got the six. So if he can compose himself here. Composure is the word we hear over yeah. and over again, an absolute necessary trait to have. Yeah. Oof. I, I don't see any of them going now. No, I think they're blown. But Derek That's Owens is the story of this division. Oh my gosh. Five minutes, five minutes before the event is called in to compete. Walks out in cowboy boots, jeans, and a belt buckle. The, like I said, the stone lifting standard is absolutely wild. And by the way, I need to mention, this guy, Philip here that we coach, this guy is the future of under 90s. I'm being serious. 18 years old, 
natural Czech absolute strongman phenom. I've never seen anyone in my life with as much potential as this guy here. The fact he's here at 18, he's 18 about three weeks ago. It's absolutely crazy. That's nuts. But we see a similar story also out of the Czech Republic in the men's opens with Andre. With Andre, yeah. We were also coaching Andre. They're, they're, they're building some, some monsters. Watch Philip's stone run. His stones are phenomenal. I, I really hope Philip finishes. Victor as well. I've not mentioned Victor, but Victor's a great lifter as well. But Philip's built for the stones. Long arms, able to get round them. Awesome. Philip Zajicek in lane one and Victor Lingman of Sweden in lane two. Here we go. All six stones would be big points for these men. Both a nice first stone. Yeah, you see, Philip's uh, mechanics for this event are just so good for an under 90. It's rare to get a tall under 90. He looks so natural lifting these stones at 18 awesome. years old. Come on, Philip. Oh my Victor, God. Victor, onto the final stone, 375 pounds for both men. Come on, Victor. Oh. oh, that is some precious energy, but so close with a massive, massive stone. 10 seconds is not enough time, in my opinion. No. But Philip won't give up until the time is done. That's just how he's built. Incredible run. The fact to even lap that 170 stone at the end of a three-day show, last stone to run, it, it's wild strength for these in the night, boys. I love it. The standard's just crazy, mate. It's, it's I'll tell you what, my back got pumped watching Victor right there just trying <laughs> to extend it up. That was incredible show of power. Yeah. And here we have heat number three. Gardar Olafsson of Iceland takes lane number one, and Nikolai Myers of the USA will be on lane number two. With this seat here, Nick Myers has a habit of flipping the points in the stone run. I think he's done it two years uh, in a row now. So let's look for Nick to uh, smash this stone run, and he's probably going to lose all those hairs on his chest. It always amazes me that Nick comes out here not tying up the beard, not shaving the chest hairs or anything, just wants to embrace that pain with each yep. stone. He said to me, I looked at him, and he was like, you know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have to speculate, and I don't mean this to be too critical, but I've seen a little bit of error from Nick on some execution this weekend. Yeah, he hasn't had the greatest day. He has had a little bit of a, a sickness uh, for a couple of weeks up to the show, but you know, no excuses from these boys. They just go out there and send it. No excuses indeed, and it lights the fire for this final event of the official Strongman Games. Here we go. A one motion by Myers. Another one motion. Officially into the 300 pound range for Nick. Oh, Nick just slipping on that third stone. Oh, he's got a better fourth stone though. Nick has found his groove. Gardar is about to load that fourth stone. Come on, Nick. 350 looks very good for Nick. Yeah. He has 15 seconds left. Nick can get this. He's made these uh, five look a little difficult, but I say he can get this stone. Time is ticking, Nick. Oh, I just can't get the lap. Ooh. It just goes to show you how even 10 seconds is not that much time and you can for see that Nick, massive stone. Nick's got a strip of bare skin now. <laughs> Have you ever seen the 40-year-old virgin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kelly Clarkson, <laughs> just stripping off that hair. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's even getting his picture taken of Mitch Hooper right there. Look yeah, at he that. he loves it. There it is. That's what we're talking about. Every year. That's a, that's a like, reverse happy trail. <laughs> yeah, he's got the Shawn Michaels love rug going on. You know what I mean? Wow. All right, we have our next heat. Three heats remain. Aiden Howell of the USA. Oh, I, I forgot. We've got Heinous as well. I've got Heinous in this guy. Andrew How Heinous. did I forget He has Andrew had Heinous. some massive, massive displays of power yesterday and even on that back toss today. Andrew's one of my favorite lifters to watch. He's, he's so smiley and so just, I just love him as a person as well. He's great. Also, 
he is an, a phenomenal stone lifter. Like I said, this night class is just filled with good stone lifters. That's why it always, the points always get jigged in the stone run because everybody's just so wild and the placings can just go all over the place. I really hope Andrew has a, uh, has a good run here. Not that I'm being biased. What's your thoughts on Aiden Howell here? I didn't know much about him until um, this weekend, but he's performed uh, consistently and phenomenally throughout the whole show. He's very explosive with his hip extension, so I think he might be a good stone lifter. That mode of power is surely unforgettable from here forward, but I believe I see Mitchell Hooper taking pictures of possible hair by Nick Myers left in the stone. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty certain the mullet adds 10% power, so we'll see. And there's Andrew Hanus right there. USA versus USA. Big breath from Hanus, he's ready to go. Lovely one motion. Oh, he just slipped a little bit on that first stone. As, um, a costly error by Andrew Hanus, but his stone loading prowess oh, he's straight back recovers in. fast. Hanus needs to take a sec to re tack soon. Oh no, he's good. He's good. That extension looks so smooth. Onto the 375, 173, 170 kilo. Come on, Hanus. Oh my god, Hanus. Come on. Come on, Andrew. Oh my God. Oh. I think those quads are just fried. Jesus, I love that man. <laughs> I heard him shout out, it was stuck to the ground. <laughs> oh, he's so good. I love, I love watching lifters. Uh, like Andrew that just have that that power in the hip extension and are able to just generate so much force especially those feet like if he hadn't have made that little mistake in that one motion I think he would have finished the run to be honest and here we have one of your athletes Derek Owens getting the call up five minutes prior to that back toss and absolutely creaming the competition it, it was amazing he had a pocket knife just hanging out of his uh, well, pocket and um, then just like didn't even realize it was there he was just walking off casually full cowboy style after sending the back throw and I, he is uh, his favorite event is stones so i tell you what shane i'm uh i'm a, several hours south of Derek, but also a texan and it does me a lot of pride to see him come out and do a bag toss in boots in jeans and his camo hat with that big old <laughs> buckle but Derek is all business now yeah all Derek, business uh, Derek plans to one mo uh, we know his plan he plans to one motion uh, the first three and then lap and load so hopefully uh, all goes to plan. He's had uh, a really, he, he said it was a, a weird day today because he wasn't visualizing, he wasn't thinking about anything, all the stress was off and then he got the call up and he said it's actually helped him a little bit because he had a good night's sleep. So yeah, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. It's gonna be one to watch folks, especially if this is a favorite event of Derek's right there. And there he is. Derek Owens. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Of, is, how do you say his name? Champagne? Is that how you say his name? That is Pierre Alain Champagne of Canada. Yeah, we will I'm see not too number sure two. about his stones, but this guy's phenomenal at everything. Hence why he's in the position he's in, so it's going to be a good race. Derek, Derek's here to prove that that 11th place invite was the correct decision and that he deserves to be here. He won the last event and he's coming for this event as well. There he goes in the 3-1 motions. I don't think anyone can question that after his bag toss and these stones are no different. Derek Owens with his fourth stone load onto the 350. Yeah, there's a few people saying a few things online about Derek getting the call up, but they're eating their words now because this man is sending this stone run and he is going to... He's going to finish these stones. Come on, Derek. Derek Owens, 375 pounds. Texas Power. Owens with the load. Let's go, Derek. Take that, Internet. Derek Owens proving every step of the way he belongs here. Yeah, but he, he deserved that call-up. It was a strange turn of events with the joint points. Um, 
they made the right call getting Derek in the final, clearly. Just a phenomenal athlete, Derek Owens. Yeah, no one can say anything after that. Our new he event leader. It. He has completed the official Strongman Games in contention for the title. We'll see how the points fall. This is the uh, this is the heat, isn't it? This is where it's going to be decided. It all comes down to this. In lane one will be Tyler Davis of the USA, and in lane number two, Gavin McNamee of Ireland. No one has won OSG um, twice, I believe, uh, in, in the weight classes. And, and if Tyler if Tyler beats Gavin this stone run, he'll be the first lightweight athlete to win OSG twice. So there's not just a title on the line, but there's like a place in history on the line for Tyler. But Gav. Anything to do with posterior chain, Gavin is just insane. Did you see his frame, Gary? Oh my gosh, he has just been an absolute blitz. Yeah, the deadlift as well. He looked like he could have doubled the last bar. It was wild. But look at Tyler right there on the left. Though I, arguably the biggest traps in this weight category. Yeah. And that speaks to something about that that yeah. power. Tyler's a, just a, a, a really good strong man. He doesn't seem to have anything stand out, but he doesn't have any weaknesses. He's always like there or thereabouts on every event. Very skilled and doesn't really make many mistakes, hence why he's you know, so consistent in his performances. A man with no weaknesses is a dangerous man indeed. Tyler Davis of the USA, left of screen. Gavin McNamee. Gav just set in Ireland. the stones. Each man needs a perfect run. A lot of, lot of pressure on these boys. Um, this is where people make mistakes, isn't it? We saw it in the women's opens. Lucy, unfortunately, just succumbed a little to the pressure. Hopefully, these boys are able to handle it and have two good stone runs. Anything can happen here, folks. This is for the title. <laughs> neck and neck already. Tyler one motioning. Tyler edges ahead substantially. This is where Gavel start making up on these heavier stones. He's just so powerful. On to the 350 for Davis. Powerful extension. The final stone for Tyler. I think he Gav knows. Oh, they're going straight. Oh, Tyler slips. There we go, Gav. Holy. This is for the title, Gav. Come on, mate. Oh, my oh God. a costly fall. What do you make of that celebration from Tyler? Did he know that he... What, what was that about? I don't know. I was a bit confused, mate. I don't really know. Because Gav's, Gav's leading going into this event, so... In third place from the USA, Derek Owens, the winner of those last two events. Incredible. He was incredible. Tyler Davis. In second place of the USA. And your world's strongest man... Out of Ireland... Gavin McNamee, your champion under 90 kilograms. A force of nature. He, his performance this weekend really, really stood out. Just the speed from this guy and the strength. And that is why he is our world's strongest man, 90 kilo category. Ireland on top of the podium, USA, USA underneath. But all three men just shows of force all weekend long. Gavin McNamee, your world's strongest man in the 93 kilo or the 90 kilo class.